And now, and joining me at the table, our panel, Washington Post political reporter Eugene Scott, the Boston Globe's Kimberly Atkins store, and Republican strategist Doug Hay. It's nice to be together. Appreciate you guys being here. We've got a bunch of time to talk about this, so let's get right to it. Eugene, let me ask you right now. Americans are fed up. They're fed up about guns, about abortion rights, about the Supreme Court about the president right now. This number is, is almost laughable if it weren't true, that only 10% of Americans right now think the country is headed in the right direction. So what in the near term, given White House allies tell me they think that, that minds are going to be made up by the end of the summer, mm. can the president and Democrats do to sort of change the view of Americans in this limited window? Well, they're going, ha going to have to address the things that Americans are looking at that it's leading them to say that they're unhappy. So we're going to have to see significant changes in inflation, some meaningful legislation related to gun reform that it's going to make people feel somewhat more safe and just addressing all of these other issues that so many But meaningful, voters... meaningful legislation related to gun reform, they got something done. That's done, right? Uh, well, it doesn't seem to be. We're still having this, the very much same issues that people... But there's no room for more movement on it. Well, we not agree? now. And so the, so the White House and Democrats are in a tough position because they won't be able to change any minds considering that they can't do much more at this point. It feels like, Doug, right now there's a frustration that Democrats are saying to the president, just show us your outrage, show us that anger right now. I mean, what gives on that front? Democrats aren't seeing the president as a conduit for their frustration at this moment. Yeah, well, two things. One, he's trying to not be Donald Trump, who obviously showed frustration every day on everything. Um, but two, I think if you look at where Republicans struggled in, in Congress over the past few um, Congresses, it was always that the, the groups that were the loudest, the Freedom Caucus or whomever, were saying, you have to fight. And it's one thing to be willing to fight. It's another thing to have the ability uh, to land your punches, knock your opponent down, actually win the fight. And this is where we see uh, sometimes outsized expectations of what you're able to do, is just show that you fight and then you're going to be successful when the reality is, when you have 50 Senate seats, or when I worked in the House of Representatives, just the House, not the Senate, not the White House, your ability to get those things done uh, is really limited. We're going to get to this in a moment, but you were watching J.B. Pritzker in Illinois, just sort of a contrast in the way they handled this stuff. Gavin Newsom in California mm -hmm. doing the same. The president was speaking at the 4th of July, just sort of said, we have to do more. We have to get this under control. J.B. Pritzker said, I'm angry. I'm furious about this. Kim, is this sort of public, public frustration, this venting by Democrats, does it have a risk of being counterproductive, as Democrats like Ro Khanna have now warned? Yeah, I, I think what they need to do is to stop fighting with each other about what the right strategy is and start telling the American people that they are fighting for them. I think that's the crucial point there. This is not Joe Biden's sweet spot. Joe Biden is at, not out in front uh, arguing and expressing anger over things that are, are issues like abortion or guns. He wants to talk about inflation. He wants to talk about the economy. He wants to talk about those kitchen table uh, subjects that he think are, are led to his victory in 2020. But these times have changed. The world has changed in those into, ensuing two years. And it seems that he's sort of behind the pulse of the American people saying, OK, well, now, yeah, I think the filib you know, getting rid of the filibuster is OK. That's so little, so late. He needs to show an urgency, even if they are limited in what they can actually do legislatively, which I think I, they can do more than they, they're saying. But I, he needs to show that he understands the urgency to get people to go out again mm -hmm. and vote because if Democrats lose control of either house in Congress at this point, Correct. it will only get worse As for Democrats. As the top house Democrats said to me recently, they said, we don't have to change the world. We just got to chip away at these problems, yeah. demonstrate that we're going in the right direction. Doug, I want to ask you about something that uh, Mitt Romney said, addressing the frustration mm -hmm. that exists broadly uh, in America right now. He wrote this in The Atlantic about the denial the U.S. finds itself across the political spectrum. He says, what accounts for the blithe dismissal of potentially cataclysmic threats? The left thinks the right is at fault for ignoring climate change and the attacks on our political system. The right thinks the left is, at, is the problem for ignoring illegal immigration and the national debt. But wishful thinking happens across the political spectrum. More and more, we are a nation in denial. Is, is this sort of the inevitable effect of an increasingly polarized country right now that we're stuck in this stasis? Yeah, absolutely. You could boil the Mitt Romney statement down to two words, one gridlock and the other being anger. 
And what we see is when voters are mad about one thing, regardless of whether they're Republicans or Democrats, if they're mad about one thing, they're more likely to be mad about something else. So when you have inflation at over 8 percent, then you see the situation at the border. Then you see the situation of rising crime, everything else that's going on. Obviously, if you're a Democrat, abortion, potentially guns as well. You're, st you're already starting at a place of anger that's only going to increase. And so I would say not just anger. What we're seeing from a lot of voters right now is fear. Mm -hmm. when, when it's related to abortion, when it's related to gun violence, and even the economy. People are afraid. And what Biden is not articulating to many people is that he understands their fear. Mm -hmm. And when people are afraid and they don't think you take their fear seriously, they're going to look for someone who they think is. So let's talk about that, Eugene, right now. I mean, it is striking. These conversations, you see, we're not even at the midterms yet. There are already folks talking about 2024, right? President Biden already approaching 80 years old, right, would be 82 at the time of his re-election if it were to happen. There's new conversations about Gavin Newsom going after Governor DeSantis in Florida, J.B. Pritzker getting some attention lately in Chicago. He obviously has the means to basically subsidize an entire <laughs> campaign. As you look at 2024, is the issue the message or is it the messenger? I think it's going to be a bit of both. I think people are looking for a new voice, a new, new ideas, people who understand where we actually are, someone who is not appealing to times gone by, someone who is not trying to make something great again or remember when they were in the Senate and how things used to be, but someone who knows where we are in 2022 and where we need to go and has answers to those real problems. Kim, is this fundamentally a progressive versus moderate issue for the Democrats right now or maybe a generational divide? What is it? I think it's a little of all of the above, and I think that just underscores the reason for Biden for his own political future, that he needs to do a better job of seeing that he understands uh, the fire that's down here. When people are looking for somebody else and your party is the incumbent, that's a big, big problem. And I think a, a messy primary for Democrats would also be extremely damaging in 2024. What would be best for Democrats would be to find a way to get that energy behind their president. But it doesn't seem right now, especially given the way that some of these other Democrats are essentially running for president already, that doesn't, um, that doesn't bode well for him. Doug, let me get your take from the other side of the aisle right now. You look at a Pritzker, you look at a Gavin Newsom, these guys aren't going to run against Joe Biden. But if there were some void, you'd think traditionally the vice president would be the next in line. But right now I speak to allies of the president. They say, you know, I think I think most Democrats agree that she may not be the most capable candidate for the Democrats going forward. So what yeah. is the best strategy as you help the other side? Well, if you look at the polling of Biden, obviously we see low numbers, right? And when I was at the Republican National Committee in 2010, our magic number for Obama was 46. We felt if he was at or below that, we'd take back the House. And ultimately, he was at 44, 45. Biden's well below that. But to me, that's not the startling number for Joe Biden. It's a really low approval rating, relatively speaking, among Democrats. It tells me that a Pritzker, a, a Newsom, who are making news nationally, are putting themselves in a position to run if that if that happens, maybe to challenge Biden or certainly to be at the beginning of that start line if Biden steps away. And at that point, it will be a free for all. How risky is that for Democrats, Eugene? Uh, quite risky, I would imagine. I mean, they need to figure out how they can get a message that is going to keep people instead of uh, people dealing with fatigue and just not showing up at all, which is a very real concern moving forward. Low turnout numbers. Abortion, guns, are they enough to turn the tide? I don't know. We've seen in the past guns not be enough. We've never seen Roe v. Wade being overturned. It's not clear that there are voters who wouldn't have already voted Democrat who the issue of guns or abortion may bring about. The Democrats hope there's some more moderate, independent-minded folks who may say, hey, you know, this, we got to change this, and maybe that brings them in if they're disillusioned by both parties. But they're going to need to bring out a lot of folks, given the economy right now, to, to turn things. They are going to have to bring out a lot of new fo yes. folks. That, that's, the, that's the problem. And a lot of people who they're depending on, folks in the suburbs, already know they can still get access to abortion in many cases. It, it, they and their loved ones can, so I don't know if that'll move the needle for them or not. Kim, Doug. Eugene, great conversation. Appreciate you guys being here and sharing your expertise and perspective. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.